today we're looking at Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari, and we're checking out chapter two. And in it, it's saying that we can literally override the programming of our actual DNA with stories. This power to use fictive stories or imagine realities. Isn't that fascinating that our prefrontal cortex, something became, uh, there was a mutation. Something happened inside of our brains uh, that had to do with our DNA, which was the advent of the cognitive revolution, as you know. Up until this point, we were being pushed around, pushed around by our super smart and big Neanderthal brothers and sisters. But unfortunately, I don't care how big they are. They just like us were and are animals. We're animals. With this said, their cognitive abilities were far more limited because they didn't have this ability like we do. Oh, I can do this, this, and this to, to imagine with our mind to create fiction. And it's this fiction which allowed sapiens to, well, in, in theory, in theory, to destroy all of the other human species off the face of the earth. Again, 70,000 years ago, this is when we first began to see, you know, boats, oil lamps, bows, and arrows. What caused it? The most common theory is a DNA mutation. Like I said, a tree of knowledge mutation. And it's this fictive language that was acquired by us, the Homo sapiens, which is a heck of a lot different than what we're seeing in the animal kingdom. A monkey can yell, look, there's a lion. Or how, how do monkeys yell? And his buddies will get it, but they can't quite say, uh, look, there's a lion down by the end of the Quail River, but don't worry, it's only three feet tall. You gotta go over the hornet's nest. He's still missing his claws, so don't worry, okay? It's a lion, but it's like, you know. But don't get me wrong, Neanderthals and archaic Homo sapiens also had a hard time going into detail. Of course they did, uh, which is so important for bonding. I mean, don't you and I, when we get together, we bond about gossip and rumors. Um, when, when we're over by the um, coffee pot or the water cooler, that's what we're really talking about. We're not really talking about budgeting what's happening in the literature department all the time. When we're alone, no, we're bonding. Who's sleeping with who? Oh, that, that's terrible that they would do that. that. That's slut. But the new linguistic skills the sapiens acquired allowed this. They did. And thus we formed tighter bonds with secrets. I guess the secrets create trust. So the gossip theory and look, there's a lion theory, as cool as they are, they can only go so far. Both of these theories pale in comparison to our ability to create this imaginary fictive language. That is, that is to talk about these things that we've never seen, touched or smelled. Of course, laws, legends, myths, gods, money, and to do so collectively. This allowed us to be able to work together in larger numbers, to be able to imagine things together, to construct things in our mind together. Our chimpanzee cousins live in small groups of several dozen members, and you and I, without our ability to create collective fictions inside of our minds, we would only be able to work together in a group of about 150 people. Because at that point, it just would fall apart. Um, that's a lot of interactions though, don't get me wrong, 150 people, that, that's a lot. And so that's what these earlier humans were doing, if you can call them that. Oh, of course, let's call them that. But for an example, in a band of 50 individuals, if you took 50 of us without this DNA mutation to create fictions inside of our mind, there are about 1,225 one-on-one -on -one relationships and countless more complex relationships of, of social combinations. But the mind can only handle so much. This is because in these small bands, these are usually led by an alpha male who has to actually spend lots of time backslapping and kissing baby chimps, just like in human politics. You know, you, you see that politician down at the conference center literally shaking hands and kissing babies. How many of your Facebook friends are actual real friends? I, I bet it's around the 150 mark, if that even. So how did Homo sapiens cross this critical threshold? That's what I'm asking myself as I'm reading this, eventually creating vast super megaopolises. How did we do it? I mean, you can put millions of people all together in a city and it runs great, but what would happen if we put millions of chimpanzees in a city or millions of even, gosh, you know, these other earlier humans? 
These large groups of strangers can cooperate successfully by believing in these myths. Two Catholics can help fund a hospital together because they both believe that God was incarnated in human flesh. Two lawyers will combine efforts to defend a complete stranger because they both believe in the existence of laws and justice and human rights. But none of these things actually exists outside the stories that people invent and tell one another. There are no gods in the universe. No nations, no states, no money, no human rights, no laws, and no justice outside the common imagination of humans that allows us to sculpt our realities. Some sorcerers are charlatans, but most are believing in what they do, and they believe in the existence of gods and demons, just like most millionaires believe in corporations and money and LLCs, and most human activists, human rights activists, believe in the rights of human beings like it's a real thing, don't they? So to come back to where we started, while the behavior patterns of archaic humans remain fixed for tens of thousands of years, sapiens could transform their social structures, the nature of their interpersonal relationships, and a host of other behaviors within a decade or two, all by telling fictive stories and by creating those imagined constructs and believing in them. You've got to understand the Homo erectus to reiterate were around for two million years and they were still using stone tools, but something happened in our brain 70,000 years ago that allowed us to tell these fictive stories. In other words, biology sets the basic parameters for the behavior capacities for Homo sapiens. It's a biological arena. However, this arena is large and allows the sapiens to invent fiction, which is basically complex games, and each generation is building upon itself. And these stories have allowed us to cooperate effectively in large numbers to create Facebook and Apple and to do impossible things. Thank you so much for joining me today and feel free to share this video with any of your friends. And maybe we'll continue on Sapiens. I want to explore evil. There's a great chapter on dualism. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and thumbs up button if you haven't already. Meanwhile, I hope you're having a fantastic week. I'll see you next Friday. It was great, as always.